All right, it's Gamble Mash here for the August 12th KZFR Peace and Social Justice Show. It's really a pleasure of mine. I've known Ken Fleming just about the entire time I've been in here in Chico, going on four years. And Ken Fleming's here to talk about districts for Chico. So welcome to the KZFR production studio, Ken Fleming. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate you having me. Oh, it's my pleasure, Ken. So tell us, tell our listeners a bit about Ken Fleming and your love for Chico. Well, I've been in Chico since um, 1978, raised my daughter here. Originally meant to spend two years here and move back to, back to the Bay. But I guess my love for Chico kept that from ever happening. Wow, I, I graduated high school in 78, Ken. So that's a milestone year for me. Went in the Navy, so you've been here a long time. Then. Oh. <laughs> it's a great city, man. I love Chico. So I'm going to just read uh, the, the first part of your, your website, the uh, Chico District's website. And it's got this little tagline I want to have a little chance to talk about, but it's called Representation Without Polarization. And it's historic change. First paragraph is, Districts for Chico is a diverse group of Chico residents that is proposing a historic change for our city. It's one that dozens of other California cities have made in recent years switching from at-large citywide city council elections to electing council members by district. Take it from there, Ken. We're uh, long overdue to change the way we do our policy and decision-making here in, in Chico. Virtually all of it, no matter how big or how little the decision, it's based upon blue and red. It's based upon political party and the elections. What is left out are actually the people who live in in Chico. Time and again over the years, I've seen small groups of people from one area of the city go to the city council to protest some decision that was made, usually with little or no community input. They're always amazed at how this could happen and chagrin that it's going to impact their neighborhood And more often than not, they are pretty much stuck with the outcome. Larger decisions just don't get made at all often, or they get punted. A good example of that over the years would be the junkyard. Three city councils weighed in on that. It started back in the 70s, and we're still dealing with it. More recently, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to make a rational, reasonable decision about the Esplanade and updating it for the betterment of all of Chico. Yeah, and the one that comes to my mind, that I was just getting to Chico when this happened, and it was one of my favorite events, is the Farmer's Market. That was another thing that went on for years about moving the Farmer's Market, you know, so I, I really really understand what you're talking about ken as far as the inability to kind of make make decisions as a council and and move on to the next thing it just ties up an awful lot of time and energy and money and districts for chico basically feels that that is what we uh, really need to change everything is so focused everything in the city is so focused on the next elect city council election in two years that it it clouds um, the discussion and and, and uh, my belief uh, the decision making. So so let's t- touch upon a couple of the aspects that differ. You know, educate our listeners or help our listeners understand, including me. Actually, I'm not an expert on this by any stretch. But what are district elections and how do they differ from at large elections, Ken? Well, currently um, we have at large elections. Uh, basically, everyone runs across the city. And every voter in the city decides the three or four persons that they're going to to vote for. With districts, basically the city, it would be divided into seven homogeneous neighborhoods. And the voters in that neighborhood would elect one representative to the Chico City Council. Basically, what this would do is ensure that all of the needs of the city were being considered in each and every decision. For example, our current city council, all seven members live north of Bidwell Park. No one lives south of the park. If you go out to our website, you can see a map that shows where all the city council members have lived over the past 20 years. And 
during that time, only three persons have lived south of 8th Street or 32. So you're looking at this map, you're saying that with this new district elections, we would have better representation as far as, you know, people, you know, living in maybe a smaller neighborhood and, you know, getting more involved with their local issues versus, you know, worrying about the next election and, you know, how they stand in the face of, you know, their fellow council members and the people that show up at the councils? Yes, that's correct. First of all, the people will know who is supposed to be representing their point of view. We think that will hold council members more accountable. I mean, basically now, a council member knows that on any given decision, even if it is very annoying to a particular group of people, they can basically go ahead and do the politically correct thing because they're going to be campaigning citywide. We think that this will make city council members much more accountable. We think that it will improve constituent services. Right now you have to kind of shop around in terms of who's going to, you're going to approach if you have a problem. This will make it much cleaner. And ultimately we think it will lower the cost of campaigning dramatically and thereby encourage more and different people to take on the job of city council. So as, as far as the effect on the voters, to see if I understand this, so if I was in a specific one of these seven districts, I could only cast a vote for someone that's physically campaigning for the seat in that, in that district, and they would live in that district? That's correct. So explain a little bit then, Ken, from the campaigning side. So you've got a sm- much smaller area of Chico without seeing the map of what these districts would look like. How does that help for grassroots candidates uh, you, like, like might want to go door to door or, you know, use quote unquote low cost methods to you get mm-hmm. themselves elected? Well, it would make it possible to go door to door, but it would also encourage people that have lived in, in these neighborhoods who have been active in these neighborhoods, who've worked with other organizations in these neighborhoods to consider stepping up and, and running. They would be able to, as you point out, campaign door to door. That's virtually impossible when you're a city approaching 100,000 people, as Chico is. Plus, it seemed like it would have an impact on the, the cost of running the election or you know, being part of the election in that if you only had to campaign in your district, you wouldn't need quite as much money. I mean, you could give us some insights on the money aspect. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right, Bill. I mean, currently, for example, you know, we love them, we hate them, you know, mailers, mailers. Well, if you're going to run in Chico and you're going to do a mailing, you need to be prepared to spend a very large amount of money getting to the mm, 40 or 50,000 uh, registered voters. On the other hand, if we had a district election, it would be a matter of reaching out to between five and 7,000 voters, a much more manageable and way to, to get out your message. And since you're talking to people that you live with and, and, and often face-to-face, you actually have to have policies. You have to have, you have, to have ideas that make sense. I mean, too much of the campaigning is, I love Bidwell Park, police are wonderful, We should support the fire. I mean, on and on and on. It doesn't make any difference. Policy, well, that's a different thing. Once it gets down to making decisions for any of those things, the park appears to be a chronic loser, and public safety is the only winner. Where are you guys at in the process, Ken Fleming? So once again, for our listeners, we're we're talking with Ken Fleming, and he's involved with the group uh, Chico Districts. What's the name of the group again? Make sure I get it right. Districts for Chico. Districts for Chico. I knew I was saying it wrong. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Districts for Chico, but he's in the studio here today. And where you guys? Where are you guys at on the whole process, Ken? Well, we developed a um, PowerPoint presentation. We spent uh, several months uh, showing it any and every group that would allow us in the door. We then went to the city council and asked them to simply put it on the council agenda for for discussion we weren't asking them to do anything except allow uh, a discussion of the concept interestingly enough on a 4-3 vote decided not to put it up for discussion and forgive the sarcasm but it was one of the few times that uh, something was uh, in this case voted down by two reds and two blues 
So how do people get involved in your, your efforts, Ken? I mean, you guys got a website. What's your website? And, you know, can people get involved as far as volunteering? And what do you guys need? Absolutely. Districtsforchico.com. One word. Districtsforchico.com is our website. We'd love people to go out there. You can learn a great deal about uh, districts and um, how they're growing in use throughout California. When you do download, please download our PowerPoint uh, slideshow. It will give you lots of information. You'll get the full picture. Then if you agree that switching to districts would be good for Chico, we're asking folks to let uh, the city council know that, that ask them to put a city charter change on an upcoming ballot and let the voters decide whether they want a more effective city council or not. We're also looking for people to help us table. We'll be tabling at the farmer's market, the Saturday market, every Saturday through the elections. And we could sure use help with a few volunteers to help us table there and in other locations. What was the website again? Districtsforchico.com. Ken Fleming, it's been a wonderful, wonderful having you in here. Any closing thoughts and comments as we, we leave our listeners and move on to... Actually, we're going to have interviews for some non-incumbent candidates. We're going to have Giovanni Tresseri on and Mercedes um, or says be nice to kind of hear some thoughts and comments on the districts y- yes I have two thoughts one is it's really important for people to, to remember in Chico that city council elections and board of supervisors elections are supposed to be nonpartisan we are too far away from that and also I would like people to consider going out to chicosoul.org and reading a fantastic piece of investigative reporting on the 2014 elections and where the money came from. Basically between the candidates and the PACs spending, we spent almost a quarter of a million dollars electing three people to the city council. Too much for too little. Thanks, awesome. Man. I'm going to post that on the KZFR uh, Peace and Social Justice page. So look for that article. And thanks again, Ken Fleming. And I'll see you around town, man. Thanks, Bill.